do my SEO team. I'm very much into technical SEO and analytics. Today we are going to discuss state-of-the-art SEO with Joomla. But before we start, I brought you some information what ranking factors are. Now, the reason that the search metric study is of 2015 is because Google's algorithms are pretty much self-learning at the moment. Get this? <clears throat> and uh, how they evaluate websites is pretty much dependent on the area of business you are in. So let's have a look at the number of backlinks. Here you see the Google positions, 1 to 30. Here you see the total amount of backlinks. This here is a, a correlation. Having more backlinks here and a positive correlation means you're ranking higher. More of the one equals in higher rankings. Let's have a look at the referring domains. Same goes for this graphic. Here you see the referring to domains. Here you see the Google positions. Here you see the correlation. You see that this is slightly decreasing. It's in comparison 2014 to 2015. You see that the top positions have a lower amount of referring domains. Now there's a story that I always tell to my customers. If you have a good friend and that good friend recommends, I don't know, a business, let it be a bakery, and tells you, okay, this bakery is good, you are likely to go visit and buy bread. If this, is of, if this recommendation is author authoritative for you because you know that you have the same taste, then you likely go there. And it's also very likely that this same friend is going to recommend you more than once. So you could also say that these have all been doing link building, trying to cheat the Google algorithm. It's not that important to have links from many domains as it is to build a good business partnership. The age of the links, this is particularly interesting. You have the, top, you have the positions here, you have the age and days, you see them from 2014 to 2015. Uh, if you want to rank high, then the average age of a link is 600 days. So if you try to cheat the algorithm by doing quick and fast and dirty link building, this is very likely not going to work. The existence of the description, meta description this is, that is the snippet that you see below the blue title in the Google result, also has increased. If you are in top positions, 99.6% have a meta description. The existence of the H1, also very important in the HTML markup to make Google see what it is about, has also increased in comparison to 2014. HTTPS is something that at, in 2015 we didn't have a comparison to, but you see pages ranking on position 1 to 3 use HTTPS to 14 to 19% uh, of all these websites. Page load time, very important thing. If you want to be on top positions, then your page needs to be steaming fast. Google is also giving the one sitting on position one a bit the benefit of pre-rendering the page if you are likely then to click on that. URL length is also very important. You could say that rankings and top positions have a short URL length because they are able to say what they mean in very short. That could also be because these are brands. The amount of words, my working hypo hypothesis is that uh, the ones ranking in top positions are also a little quicker in saying what they mean instead of blah blahing the customer. Same goes for all these values here. Wikipedia, by the way, is excluded in that. Relevant terms, that is very interesting. I'm going to explain that to you soon. 40% of the pages ranking on top positions use relevant terms. Now, what are relevant terms? For that, I'm always recommending a tool of a dear colleague, Thomas Mintnich from Germany. It's called termlabs.io. If you are English speaking, then the tool is of little use to you uh, right now. 
um, it is more for the German market. If you want to rank for the keyword holiday home, that's Feinhaus, Denmark is Denmark. Then you see a document count, what the tool is doing, it's going and scraping the data of the top 20 results and then displaying how many documents of the top 20 results have these keywords in there. You see that the document count is 19. So this is a keyword that you need to have in there. We call that proof keyword. The same you see for adjacent keywords like Feinhaus, it's holiday home, Danish is Danish, Nordsee is North Sea, Bornholm is an island, Ostsee is the Eastern Sea, Küste is coast. You see that Feinhaus, all of them have in them Danish and Danish, Danish are that's adjacent terms that you need to have in there. Now, here I did, um, 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 I filtered the corpus rank. The corpus rank in that tool is defined as the amount of times this keyword is used in the whole document corpus or in the language corpus. So you see Denmark and Feinhaus is used a lot like with and in and it has a very, very low corpus rank. When you, when you are looking for proof keywords like these being in a lot of documents, then you need to be aware of the fact that keywords that are frequently used are not as relevant to a search engine because when you are a search engine, you want to tell the one document from the other apart. He, she, it, in, you, they is in so many documents that they are likely not to be used for telling documents apart. Other things currently happening in SEO. The Google Penguin. Who has heard of the Google Penguin? Raise your hand. Okay, interesting. So the Google Penguin update is in the essence a way in trying to get rid of link spam. Google in the past was called backrub because they have been analyzing the links and the anchor texts of the links to other sites. That's the key element of the Google algorithm. So as soon as people noticed that, you know, when I want to rank for Holiday Home Denmark, then I build links with Holiday Home Denmark in there. <coughs> Google had a problem because that's when the spammers started their business and of course the quality of the search results wasn't as good as you would expect. Whenever a Google update is happening, you see um, high crawling frequency. This is uh, for Joomla.org. So whenever in SEO we see high crawling spikes, we know there is something brewing in the algorithm. An example for free, it's bad link building, that's where they got hit by the Penguin, is Home24, they sell all sorts of tools in Germany. In October last year, they were relieved out of their Penguin penalty and have been having increasing links. They had quite a lot of links to be reduced. At that time, dslweb.de also you know, had a huge gain in rankings and visibility index. Visibility index is a metric introduced by Systrix. They are scraping 2000, uh, 250,000 keywords a week and they have a look at where the domain is situated. As a general rule, you could say that with a visibility index, you have about 1,000 visitors a day, but that may or may not vary. Um, one very interesting thing is that Google has developed the Penguin algorithm in a way that it is automated. I don't know if there's a cron job going from time to time. So if you are doing bad link building and you get hit, then uh, you may not know that there is a Penguin going on. In the past, they have always said, okay, here's the Penguin <coughs> update, and then we see that you are dropping. Now, regarding the Penguin, I want to say something about negative SEO. Jetzt wäre der Moment, wo du ausschaltest. Good. Now, our agenda today is SEO with Joomla. So I've been relaunching a Type 3 system with Joomla. Joomla, I will present you with some KPI. Um, talk about crawl budget, typical fails and relaunches, missing 301 redirect 
advantages of HTTP2, title description, server architecture, mobile optimization, and Google My Business optimization. The ones I left out you could read. The, the question was, why did I do that? Um, with TYPO3, we had a custom created template, so we needed to adapt the template. Um, that would have been very, very cost intensive. We wouldn't like to do that. Then in TYPO3, there's a plugin called Real URL, which doesn't really allow you to do good URLs. And uh, we had a mobile page that was flagged with is mobile equals one, pushing a lot of sites in the index. Project introduction is the autopraxis in Bonn that's orthopedic doctors in the city of Bonn in Germany. This is how the site looked previously. This is how it looks now. This here is grade 1.1. We are scraping that from a site called Yameda. They provide ratings for doctors. Um, Lucas' brother David has been creating that for us uh, very swiftly. You see that uh, the doctor is on the site as well with uh, according, according rates, and uh, you see footer as uh, some sort of uh, menu. Menu. Let's have a look at the KPI and uh, the project results. This is a tool called Manhattan Tool, also from colleagues in Bonn. You see that. During the relaunch, something happened. This is a sum diagram. Red is 100, uh, green is top 30, and uh, bluish is top 10 rankings. You see that in the keyword set that they create, which is scraping 6 million keywords a week, there are quite some improvements if you have a look at the top 10 rankings and the top 100 rankings after the relaunch. I want to also uh, show you that uh, this is not just uh, a fixed example. So I brought you data from 2013 to uh, 2017, actually. This is here, the, the data yesterday. Um, for their main keyword, which is orthopedic bond, orthopedic doctor practi practitioner um, in Bonn, that there's quite some increase up to top three with the techniques used. The search volume of that keyword in Google is 2,400 searches per month. One of um, the keywords I'm going to use for explanation um, throughout the whole presentation is Gelenkarthrose translates to joint arthrosis. Search volume is about 700 a month. You see after the changes that this keyword is ranking on position one and has been ranking on position one ever since. One of the reasons that is from the Google Search Console is that it has a high click-through rate. So when you rank on position one, it is typical that your click-through rate is about 30% or above. You can. Um, try to um, do a very interesting snippet so that your click-through rate is higher. We are going to see that soon. Results with that, 30% more traffic in total, significant, significantly more traffic from surrounding city, and 7% more calls in comparison to the year before. Let's talk about the template system. I'm using uh, JSN Tikai from Joomla Shine. These are the template positions. I like to have a couple of positions to have the possibility to do verbose output. This is it uh, in the footer. There are a lot of uh, pros and cons for using a template framework. They are very, very flexible. But then again, you have a lot of data overhead. And uh, I think uh, in, in total that's uh, one point something megabytes if you're looking at 3G connections, which some people have, then that's not sufficient for having a fast site. My secret weapon uh, in optimizing my customers is uh, Rowan Hoskins Abrahal because she goes in and uh, optimizes them to a minimum taking out JavaScripts that are not used and uh, taking out CSS selectors that are not used. Let's talk a little bit about what Google really loves. In the past, 
you had to have one good site, one good web, singular website on a domain. It could be 1.html, 2.html, whatever, and you were doing well. Today, Google likes well done domain concepts. So if you have one good website, but you have 20 websites that are crap, you are likely not going to get high in rankings for the one website that you want to rank for. Keyword analysis is very important. To have the best content for this is very important. I'm talking about best content. Think about the data of the study um, where pages ranking on position one actually have a little less words being able to transact their message a little more quickly, maybe. Um, then we need to see to it that Google has enough trust in our domain. That means quality backlinks and uh, a fair amount of that, as shown in the study. And we need to satisfy the user's need or the user's search intention with our content. Now, what I'm always saying to my customers is, if you cannot say what you mean, you can never mean what you say. The details are everything. I'm a huge Babylon 5 uh, fan, uh, and it has been presented by Durano, the Centauri Minister of Intelligence. So what does that mean in terms of technology? There are a couple of interesting technical SEO metrics that um, Google has been creating a blog post. You have that address over here. Have a look and uh, go in that. The blog post is from January 2017. And it talks about crawl budget. That is the maximum number of pages that Google crawls on a website per time. The crawl rate limit is defined as crawl health. So if Google sees that your server is reacting quickly, then they will crawl more pages. If they see that the time to first byte is uh, increasing, then they will crawl less pages. So if you optimize for crawl budget, optimizing for time to first byte is very important. You can also set in the Google Search Console to increase or reduce crawling to the domain. Crawl dem demand is uh, in the essence defined by popularity, that's page rank. So if uh, a page get, gets linked often from another page, then you're getting crawled. Factors that affect crawl budget. Facetted navigation, on-site soft errors, hacked pages. If your page is hacked, then Google is not likely to crawl. Infinity spaces, proxies, low content, and spam. Facetted navigation, that is very, very important if you want to optimize for your crawl budget. You see that you have a couple of filter results here. Taste, regular, sour, fruity, juicy, gluten-free, and you have price combinations. So if you combine that, you have a lot of combinations and a lot of pages with get parameters, gummy candies, price 5 to 10 and over 10, that you push into the index. All these pages have to get crawled by Google and this is a waste of crawl budget. One of my favorite examples is how to not use canonicals. The use of or the use of a canonical indicates to search engines which is the relevant page to index. Now, that customer or the developers of that customers um, have used the canonical with session parameters. It's likely just an error in the code. So what they want to do is canonicalize this here. The problem is, when you now go through that with a crawler, the session parameters are set in the URL or in the canonical and uh, Google says, well, if there's a canonical, then this page is important and this page gets indexed. The reason for using the canonical and using it right would be to indicate to Google, okay, the session parameters are irrelevant, canonicalize this page here and nothing more. Huh? On-site duplicate content, that is, in the essence, the same if you use the get parameters. You see that the pages look pretty much the same, but
but they are callable with different URLs while delivering the same content all the time. Do not do that. Let's have a swift excursion to a project that the SEO team is on right now, which is our Joomla extensions directory. Disclaimer, the current team did not fuck that up. That has been fucked up before, likely because we also didn't define what we actually want. We have about 8,000 extension, likely 300 content pages. You could argue um, that category pages are also important that will be optimized at a later point. And if you have, or if you go to Google and search for site extensions.juma.org, this is a search query parameter which displays how many results Google has in the index. So if we are comparing the around 8,000 pages that we likely have to 112,000 pages that are actually in the Google index, we are wasting crawl budget a lot. Now, if you want to save the planet, then optimize for crawl budget. Google is going green and they will be going totally green in 2017, as they say, but Bing is using a lot of coal energy, uh, indicating a very high CO2 output. So Joomla is going to save the world soon. <laughs> the, the total crawl duration that I did with the Screaming Frog, thanks guys, by the way, they have been giving us licenses uh, to all the SEO team. Um, Duration, 27 hours. RAM use doing crawl is 16 gigabytes. When done, it only uses six CPU time you can read. And we found the total amount of HTML pages of 321,562. Huge waste of budget. Now, let's, ha let's have a look at one very, very interesting URL, and that is the profile URL. You see here we have Get parameters, limit start is the delimiter for displaying the first page of the category and then going on depending on how many results you want to show per category, 5, 10, 15, and then it shows the next page. When you have a look, we found about 71,000 URLs with that. That's not good because these pages are all completely irrelevant. Now, Google, on the other hand, has only indexed 45,000 pages. You can, you know, if, if you're doing an analysis with your domain, you can always use the site parameter and then have a look at the URL to see what Google has an index and then just find out if that makes sense that Google has so many pages in the index. Now, what are we doing to fix that quickly? We are going to set the meta robots tag, no index follow, no index follow. The follow is very important because if you use a no follow, then you are likely going to break the page rank throughout the domain. We want this fix to be very quick. So what we likely will be doing is um, putting in um, footer links at the extensions directory, naming that one.html and then we put in an amount of 5,000 links so that Google crawls the document, and when they crawl that, they see that there's a noindex follow set, so they are taking that out of the index. After these pages are out of the index, we are going to block that directory via robots.txt because we don't want Google to waste crawl resources, but the use of the disallow in the robots.txt should only be done once all of these pages are out of the index. A lot of people um, think that if they block the robots for pages already in the index, we'll remove the pages from the index. Yes, that is true, but the amount of time that this takes is very high, usually, uh, depending on the radioactive decay of that page in the index. Next one, infinity spaces, also known as calendars. So if you are creating a calendar, be sure that uh, you aren't able to go back and forth to, I don't know, 1900 and 2030, which uh, will push a lot of pages into the in index. 
Important about crawl indexation budget is that pages that <coughs> do not get crawled frequently will not be in the Google index. Typically, this is important for shops that have more than a thousand products. If you are counseling the small doctor in your local city, then the crawl budget will be sufficient. That is not to say that you may not have duplicate content that could harm your rankings. Another small excursion, as you may all know, we are talking about a new router and um, there are a couple of recommendations that I have to avoid duplicate content. If we don't have an HTML suffix, then we are going to set a trailing slash because by default you can call the URL with and without trailing slash, which technically is duplicate content. We are likely going to remove multiple trailing slashes, though I do not know yet um, if we will not put that in an HD access recommendation. URLs should all be lowercase by definition. If you don't have that set, you can uh, put a capital letter in the URL and the server will also give you a uh, response. We will look into 301ing non sap URLs, so if you have see the index PHP, Viewcom content, whatever, and if you enable SAP, we'll look to it that these are getting 301 redirected. Search result pages is also a particular interest because um, they get indexed by Google as well. A lot of technicians don't know that because Google is not following a post request. So when you enter the search query in the search box and then you hit search, that's a post request. Google doesn't follow that. But if you have Google Analytics in your site, then Google will get a ping from the search results page and go fetch that information. So that's why we are going to now index the search result pages by default. I don't know if there will be a flip switch. A lot of you have probably seen the limit and limit start URLs. Yes? About the trading slash, so the label, as I Again? The trading slash, you said you consider removing it? No, adding. 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 Okay. So if you, if you don't have .html, we are going to add the trading slash. Okay, because the server will render that faster for the trading slash? No, no, okay. no. It's simply, it's simply because if you have no trading slash, um, and you call the same URL with trailing slash, that's technically duplicate content. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but also I read a number of ads are saying that the that certain pages with trailing slash is faster because the server is looking for a file when you are not using the slash. If that is faster, I would be amazed if that makes 10 or 20 milliseconds. Yeah, uh, I honestly I don't know, but I can't imagine that <coughs> this slices off a lot of time. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. and with, in which version of uh, Joomla are these things going to be implemented? We are aiming for 3.8. <laughs> uh, one more thing, you mentioned that uh, the length of the URL count. Yes. Right now, Joomla takes for each article the first category, the second, the third, and then the URL. Yep. It's another problem compared to what WordPress does, which takes slash the... We are actually looking very much in the WordPress approach. Um, to give users a hint what their slug and what their URL will be looking like, because currently that is all um, up to the menu item ID and what alias this has. So. Likely the WordPress approach will also be our approach. But I don't know that. This is in discussion. I can only say what the recommendations are and uh, the developers busy with that are looking uh, into fixing that. So it is better to, to remove the inside the, <coughs> the inside the categories. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, one of the reasons for that is you know if, if you um, have a category and another category, then going back one category gives very likely a useless page. 
in terms of waste of crawl budget. So, if you add that up throughout the uh, whole site, then uh, these may quite, may be quite a lot of useless pages. The use of rel prev and rel next we will likely implement. So, what that does is, you have a category page, you have five articles listed in that, but you have 50 articles. Now, we are using the limit and limit start to dis then display the next five articles, 10 and so on and so forth. Google indexes these pages as well, but uh, Google actually should only index the main category at that time. So what we are going to do is give Google a hint with, with rel prep and rel next. This is uh, interesting for the category display, but it's also interesting for the article display. If you've separated one longer article in three or four elements, then this is where we are going to go. So finished with that, let's go back to the autopraxis and bond. Um, I have a fresh and a new crawl. I'll just quickly show. Come on. Great. So you see here the URLs <coughs> diagnostic is diagnosis. Um, and you have all sorts of things uh, in here with the is mobile parameter, the real desktop pages were looking like this. What the developers forgot is uh, putting in a canonical in the is mobile so that only the desktop pages got indexed. Um, but that was a practice not well done. In total at that time we had about 120 pages. The newly created URL structure is flat. I like to do URL structures flat if possible. So what you now know is how to use crawl and indexation budget effectively. I always recommend to reduce the amount of pages to the essential. There's an example that I can show you. Actualis means current detail state. So if you give current information in 2006 of 2013, which are your opening hours, that's a complete waste of budget. Yeah. What you do to get rid of these pages is uh, you go into the system and remove all referring links to this page, and then you flag it with a redirect gone in your HD access, resulting in such a page that gives Google the info, or Google and search engines the information that the page is gone and to remove all reference to that. One of the traps that you could run into is near duplicate content. On the domain route, we want to rank for the auto uh, practitioners in Bonn. But since Google is using artificial intelligence algorithms and neuronal networks to distinguish and see what content could be interesting for uh, an orthopedic doctor in Bonn, Google might find these set cards. We had the set cards before. If you have such content, then give Google a hint what to rank the domain route for. This here is auto practitioner in Bonn and it's a link to the domain route. So whenever you have duplicate content um, and you think this could be a problem in Google, you can check that in the webmaster tools and see for what keyword your pages ranks with different URLs, then give Google a hint. One of the very, very bad things that you can do is changing site URLs or addresses and forget the 301 redirect. The character of the 301 redirect is the forward request in the mail. Gary Ilias, uh, a Google Webmaster Trends Analyst, has said that 301 <laughs> redirects don't lose page rank anymore. By default, a 301 redirect lost about 5% of the page rank. Page rank is the power that you get from another domain to your site, which is not the case anymore. I don't see any indication for that. 
I want to show you uh, a very bad example, which is called HRSDE. It's a hotel booking platform. They've been advertising that they have restructured the site. We thought this is a Google update and now we are going down the drain. But actually, what they have done is forget the 301 redirects and um, they lost about 90% of their visibility. The whole SEO team had to decide to pursue their career elsewhere for <laughs> understandable purposes. Now, one of the things I did with the domain, and there is only a few things resulting in the results that I've shown you, is move together content. Because we had common disease type joint arthrosis and we had the therapy for joint arthrosis. And they were displayed on two separate URLs. So what I did is I put them together, looking like that, joint arthrosis and therapy with joint arthrosis, which resulted in the higher rankings. Let's talk a little about page speed. Yes? Just on that, um, so by putting the two of them together, you've got a way better page than having multiple pages. Yes. Yes. Great, thanks. Uh, this, this was one page up to here, and this was one page up to here. So, so the volume of pages doesn't boost your rank at all. It's no. Give you good quality pages. Yes. Um, in, in the past, uh, there was the, the myth that, you know, if you're doing an SEO text, whatever an SEO text is, um, it needs to have at least 300 words. The count of words is not really uh, important. I mean, if, if you are displaying stack, stock prices, you could do that uh, with just one page showing the price for a, a specific stock. You could do that on an empty page with uh, just showing the price, but then the user will likely not have a lot of trust in that page, because if you're looking for stock information, it's uh, your money, your life information, uh, according to the Google Webmaster Quality Rater guidelines, um, and uh, there you want to have a trustful source. Lukas, is it put in the site? Do, you, do we want to have a break for 10 minutes and then continue? 10, 15? So we continue at 12.05. Who of you is new? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, the first part of the talk you can see on YouTube. I've been talking about the optimization of a project, a little bit about negative SEO. These slides are not available online. And uh, we are going to continue with page speed 100. How do I achieve 100 of 100 points when using Joomla? Now, first, we have to discuss why page speed matters. In 2006, Google did an experiment adding a post header delay. So that means the searcher has been entering the search query. The search query was done and ready for delivery, and they waited. 400 milliseconds. That resulted in minus 0.6 searches daily. Now, even after going back to full speed, it took six to eight weeks until the users of that search group were searching normally. If you're a multi-billion dollar business, then 0.6% matter. Same goes for Amazon and glasses direct, 1% delay in page load time cost you 7% conversions. That is a lot of money. When you go and optimize for page speed, then it's very, very important that your time to first byte, that means the time that the request to the server and the first information coming back to you is low. Google recommends that this be not more than 200 milliseconds. In this example, it's a shop customer, you see that we optimized the server that the time to first byte was going down, the amount of pages crawled went up. 
Remember the previous part of the presentation, only pages that get crawled as frequently as they need to be have a chance of indexation. How do I measure page speed? Well, there's a Google developers tool called PageSpeed Insights. You can plug in your site and Google is going to give you back the score ranging from zero to 100. Zero, very slow, 100, very fast. These are the, the elements that Google is using for the scoring, time to first byte, images, CSS, HTML, JS reduction, avoidance of render blocking scripts, compression and content prioritization. What can I do in Joomla to reduce my time to first byte? Well, obviously you can enable, can enable caching, system side caching and the page cache. Remember that these two options are available to you. I often see that people are just using the system cache instead of also the page cache. Another thing that you can take care of is enabling the debug mode and see uh, how many requests and what requests took what time so that you see if you have a very slow script. Um, a customer example is that they had um, a MailChimp form to enter the mail address for the newsletter on the domain route that added 500 milliseconds in, in time to first byte. So whoever created that didn't code well. I also always display to anyone who is interested how to measure that. That's easy, you use your browser, you hit F12, go to the network tab, and then you hit Control F5 to see how much time the first GET request needs here. And you see that's 112 milliseconds. Pro tip, yes? Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, when you go one step back. Yes. Okay, if we only enable the platform specific cache. Yes. For browser cache or for our server? Uh, no, that's for um, mobile and not, not mobile, no. Platform specific cache is for mobile and not mobile, I think. Is it? Because desktop and mobile are platforms. Uh, sorry, can I say something? Yeah. Uh, if you enable it, there will be two caches. Yes. Page from desktop will be cache and separate the uh, cache for mobile. Mobile. Okay. If you turn off it, mobile will get the desktop pages. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the wrong question. I said. If you turn on the cache. Which? The page cache. Page cache. Yes. Not, not the page cache. The first cache. Yes. Is it enough for browser? Is it enough for? Is it browser cache? No, that's no browser cache. That, that, that cache here is the Joomla system cache. So modules and things like that get cached so that they are de uh, uh, delivered quickly. The browser, the browser cache I will talk about soon. This here doesn't have to do with any sort of browser cache. So time to first byte measurement in your browser that's easily done and you see how quickly the site responds. A professional tip, Google always does DNS requests to find the current server IP for each resource that it is crawling. If, well, you know that Google has servers uh, in the US, um, so optimizing for DNS and IP delivery is an issue. If you want to have the fastest, you can use one of these. Typically, we are using Cloudflare to optimize that and it works quite well. You see in, in this chart here that the time to first byte then even drops a little bit, usually by 50 to 100 milliseconds, and that's where you want to go if you have a huge shop page. Um, image optimization, that's, that's, a, that's a nice one. Uh, I had a customer um, in Bonn also, and uh, they were doing hair extensions. So what they did is provide a lot of images which uh, had a total size of six megabytes. So six megabytes need to be downloaded if you're on a mobile connection that could take for ages if you aren't in the LTE net. Now, here's a very plastic example. What they did is reduce the image size to this. Let's call it 10 inches. It's an example of uh, monitors, but what they actually delivered was, whoops, was this image size. So from here to here is your data overhead. 
So for the viewport, you want to deliver the right image. You can, oops, can do that for desktops and mobiles, mobile devices as well. Very important is that you give the browser a hint where to put the mobile, or where, to, sorry, not mobile, where you put the image and how high and how wide this image is in pixels. Because if you don't do that, let's say you have an 800 times 600 image and you don't specify the dimensions, then you usually see the page jumping because the image gets rendered in later. So for quick rendering, have the dimensions set. When you optimize the images, you can use tiny JPEG or tiny PNG. Of course, there are a lot of advanced level image optimization methods. One of the stand newer standards is WebP, um, the mod page speed <coughs> that you can add in your server will automatically optimize that if you enable that, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you are an integrator and if your customer is small, then you likely don't have the resources for a dedicated server, not being able to put in the mod page speed, and this is then probably where you want to go. Just recently, Google has also presented a new way of compressing images. I think they can reduce the size of JPEG images a, a score of 35% more in comparison to the previous ones. So if you want to save bandwidth, then apply the new algorithms. Browser caching is also very uh, important. The character of the browser cache is uh, that you save pages, excuse me, that you save um, resources that get used more frequently like CSS, JavaScript images or whatever and uh, you store them locally. If you want to um, enable that, you can go here to GitHub Fanan. It has a lot of good resources on how to deal with the HD access setting that you may need. As you may have seen, I'm a fan of being able to check that. So F12 key in the browser network, select the element. This here is a JPEG file. You see the current date and time, timestamp 14th of September, it expires on the, 5th, uh, on the 14th of October. That tells us caching works. When you optimize for page speed, then you want to optimize your CSS files as well. Typically, you need to de deliver only one CSS file. If you deliver more, then the browser needs to go in. Read them all, depending on <coughs> the time when they arrive, that may take long. The optimization of CSS is in the essence minifying it, removing empty spaces, comments, and uh, if you want to be the best, then you optimize white, black, or these color codes and reduce them to only three letters. But uh, that is really overdoing it in a lot of cases. Same goes for the JavaScript optimization. Um, I think this is a jQuery that Google is delivering with their content network, content delivery network, so they even renamed the function, functions to save time. <coughs> Avoid render blocking scripts. That's also a very, very important thing. Typically, you want to put your JavaScript at the end of the body tag because then your page gets completely rendered. There are exceptions to that. Um, there is a particular interesting presentation called Instant Mobile Web Apps uh, where Google is giving you a presentation how they optimize their page speed insights uh, page with the measures that I've been telling you about. Data compression is also very, very important. Uh, in the keynote, why speed matters, we have learned that Netflix didn't enable their deflation and uh, enabling that gave them or reduced their bandwidth bill of about to about uh, 45%. If you want to put in the compression, then this is how you do it. That is also visible in the Fanan example that I've been providing to you. This is just how it looks in the HD access file. Now, yes? Uh, is that not also for um, browser caching? Was it? I don't. Browser caching was here. 
It's also red. I did then, yes, then you add the expire setters. I didn't want to put it in because you can read it all here. Okay, but it's not the same. No, deflation is compressing data, sending less data through the connection. Caching means storing files that you frequently need, like scripts, locally. Now, also, how do I check that? Firefox F12, you see, this is the size, Größe, 490 kilobytes, transacted, sent for the line, 156. Aha, uh -huh. is smaller, compression works, done. Content prioritization is also very important. I want to show you how this is done. What this is, in the essence, about is that you deliver critical CSS selectors right in the head of a document. And this is how the source code is looking and in the head of the HTML document you put in the styles that you need for rendering the document quickly. Why do you do that? Because the HTML document typically is the first thing that you transact. <coughs> now another, another issue is uh, you going in trying to achieve that one, the 100% and you see that you load external <coughs> scripts, typically that's Google Analytics or any other scripts. Um, the, the thing to do that quickly is to just uh, put or download these scripts via cron job to your server and then put the script in, host it locally. If you do that, you can cache it and uh, <coughs> you get your 100 points. How do you do that with Joomla? Well, you just use JCH Optimize. I've, I've been saying before that um, this doesn't help you in getting rid of the unnecessary code. So uh, if you are using template framework, there may be a lot of scripts, CSS or whatever, that you typically won't need. If you are looking to make a lot of money, then I suggest you create a software as a service solution that optimizes web pages for that. Uh, I will buy it. Bart, you have a question? No. Okay. If you want to remove framework overhead, then just query for remove unused CSS. There are a couple of uh, libraries that you can use. Um, GT Metrics uh, has a software as a service program uh, that you can use. A little about the server infrastructure. I like to use Accelerated because there's an administrator that I love dearly. Um, we're using four cores, SSDs, Nginx cache to use HTTP2 and PHP 7. If you are not using PHP 7 yet, you should. Why? <laughs> because it's usually twice as fast. If you want to have PHP 5.6 very fast, there are two ways that you need to combine. A, activating opcache be the send optimizer. What this is doing is, in the essence, pre-compiling the scripts and then working on that. PHP 7, you can do that as well, but by nature, PHP 7 is about twice as fast. Good? Oh, yeah. No, if you're not using 7, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Who uses PHP 5 something? Raise your hand. Is there anyone? Okay. Do you know whether you have opcache and set optimizer enabled? Do you know whether you have opcache and the send optimizer enabled? No, I, I, I don't know. Okay. If, if you want to continue using 5, I think 5.3 is the first su to support it, then be sure to enable that. That will give you almost the same results. Okay, okay let's go to HTTP2. Um, HTTP2 has been called speedy before. This is not 
about these important result, uh, resources. Um, I've been listing that to you because uh, it is nice to have information at hand quickly and learn what I know. These courses here, browser rendering optimization and website performance optimization, in my eyes are a must for every web de developer. They are very, very um, easy to watch, take a photo and uh, have fun learning. So HTTP2 is the new protocol that's driving the web. The development was started in 2009. In 2011, the developer of the protocol has been doing a presentation, very, very interesting. In 2015, the drafts and the, the final information on implementation and what the protocol does has been finished. Now, I always show this very, very interesting example and how fast that is, if my explorer doesn't crash. So this is HTTP 1. You may or may not know that with HTTP 1, you can transact six files simultaneously. So this is how long HTTP 1 takes. HTTP 2, depending on your settings, you can use up to 200 files if your server is fast enough. <clears throat> and that's it. So if your site is SSL secured, HTTP 2 only works with SSL, then there is no reason that you should not use HTTP 2. I still see a lot of customers that uh, take effort, time and money to have uh, SSL scripts, but uh, don't use HTTP 2. This is particularly interesting if you are on mobile connections because you send the request, you get the answer. On mobile connections like 3G or whatever, you have um, uh, response or, or network latency of 200 milliseconds and above. So you think about getting that one file, requesting the other, that all adds to the waterfall and until your page is finally rendered, that takes a long time with HTTP2. You can do that in one connection, one open TCP connection, pushing all the information through that. Now, how does that look in the network tab of the browser? Like this. This is HTTP2. Typically, you have the waterfall here, going, I don't know, up to here, wherever you want to have that. Um, so if you are looking whether HTTP2 is enabled, you can see that in the waterfall, or not waterfall. HTTP2 has also a very nice advantage. It supports server push. So if you know, um, that is an Nginx test, I think, of two, two years ago. So they have a screen CSS where they have the critical screen elements in that right after the, uh, the receiving of the HTML file, they are pushing this file, typically the browser needs to go in, interpret the HTML file, find out which resources I need, and then request them. And this takes the gray bar time. So with HTTP2, you can save that time as well. Can I use that .io? Data is 1.5 years old. It's been showing that um, HTTP2 has wide adoption. Speedy 3.1 was the last um, protocol type before they have finalized the drafts to then be HTTP2. Unfortunately, they are not online anymore. I don't know why. Um, was a nice resource, also well done graphically. Who's using it? All the big companies are using that. Google, by the way, is developing a new protocol called Quick, which is UDP-based. If you want to test that, you can also install uh, indicators to your browser to see how that works. If you want to know what I know, then you can read that. Have fun. Takes you one and a half days. Now, in terms of the state of the art SEO, it's also very important how I create my meta descriptions and titles. I've been showing you before that in the example of the joint orthrosis, we had an average click-through rate of about 30%, which is the rate that you want to achieve to be and stay on position one. So what I've done is 
I said, okay, joint arthrosis, what is that? Which therapy options do I have? Joint arthrosis is the wear and tear of joints in old age. Genetic predispositions can be favoring. Click and find out if you could be affected. And this here is the whole trick of that high CTR. So optimizing for click-through rate is one of the nicest disciplines and one of the quickest games and wins that you can achieve in your SEO. You should always be looking at that. Also, I try and tend to, because it's best practice, to uh, include the keyword in the URL. There have been studies indicating that 30% of the click um, decision of your potential customer is related to how your URL is structured and whether the keyword is in that URL. Sitemap you can do that very quickly. Sitemap is uh, an XML file that you give to search engines. You can enter that in your robots.txt file to give search engines a hint where the sitemap is situated. It is in the essence just the HTML documents that you deliver that the search engine can go and fetch. How do you do that? Well, with Screaming Frog, we have learned about that tool in the past. 500 URIs are free, so if you have a smaller page, then you can create a sitemap for free. Um, if you are interested in SEO, if you are interested in optimizing your page, I recommend the Screaming Frog. You could also use onpage.org. There are a couple of other tools. I've um, been asked to mention Ranking Coach, though I'm not using that tool. Maybe it's worthwhile to look into that. I've had a look three years ago, uh, and uh, maybe I need to look into that yet again. Robots.txt, there's a very important advisory from Google that is of October 2014. If you disallow the crawling of JavaScript or CSS files, this can result in suboptimal rankings. Why is that the case? Because Google renders the pages and tries to find out how the page is working, what is important on the page, what not. If you are using an old Joomla version, we typically block CSS and JavaScript files. So have a look whether it is blocked or not. Also, uh, the JCH Optimize is typically placing the combined JavaScript and CSS files into the plugins directory, which I think by default is blocked. So be sure that if you are using JCH Optimize, you allow the specific directory. Don't allow the complete plugins directory. There's also a quick way to check that. You go to the webmaster tools, go to crawling, robots, DXT tester, and then you see whether there are warnings or errors in here. Yeah. Disallow means that these URLs are disallowed from crawling. Mobile optimization in the instance of the page, we knew that we would also have a lot of uh, mobile users, so what we did is uh, make the conversion very easy. We put a hyperlink in with the phone number. So if you click on the hyperlink, the phone number gets automatically moved to your call display. You can hit call, and then getting in contact is very easy. We also put in Google Maps. So if you're on a, a cell phone, you typically search for the address again, maybe to start your navigation. So we plug that in with the according link to have the final address in there already so that from wherever you're situated, you can start your navigation. This is a negative example that I often show my customers in making conversions not easy. I need to translate that uh, for you. So this is booking formula. Uh, formula. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, company, name, surname, street, address, zip, um, uh, city, phone, email, how many grown-ups, how many children. Children is particularly important because if you are renting a holiday home, this is, you want to know how many children you have to deal with because children are particularly dirty and you have to clean up after them. And it's very important to know how many there are. Another very, very interesting thing is the optimization of Google My Business. Before that, it was called Google Places. You see the entry here. The ranking factors of Google My Business nowadays are the proximity of the business to the searcher. That's quite clear because if you're, for example, looking for a barber at the location X and you have the um, 
location services uh, enabled, then you want a barber that is very close to you. So depending on the situation, this is a ranking factor in the situative context. It's very important to have a complete profile in terms of images, text, and also imprint. I don't know how it is in, in other countries, but in Germany, you are legally required to have an imprint on that. May also be the case in the US. Positive user, user ratings are important, and of course, having better ratings than um, others is also important. Now, since we have three doctors in the practice, we had a couple of profiles more. We had the practice, pro, uh, practice profile, and um, we had two doctor's profiles, so we had to merge that. Um, didn't have to be done before. It was very interesting to talk to Google developers for the first time. In making sites fast, you can use um, accelerated mobile pages. It is uh, deviating from the usual standards um, for the benefit of having fast sites. It was used. Um, on news websites or, or gets used on news websites if you are searching for news you see that flag with AMP, AMP in your search results. If you want to do that with Joomla there is WP AMP, um, same developer as uh, SH4047 if you require additional information you can find that here what they are doing is in the essence using the best practices of rendering above the fold and of course there are also only predefined selectors so that you don't have a huge data overhead and rendering above the fold putting the critical path of the CSS in the head is what this is um, interesting is how fast or how, how, how few requests you can use with them in comparison we have 12 requests with responsive, responsive mobile, 521 kilobytes. For AMP, 8 GET requests, 109 kilobytes. That is it. Thank you.